Hi, now this is a little um, tutorial on graphic settings for Flag Year 2017 3.1. Um, how to get the best looking scenery and such like out of the ALS, that stands for Atmospheric Light Scattering Rendering Mode. I'm sitting here at uh, Manston, which is Echo Golf uh, Mike Hotel. This is the basic scenery in its most basic form. Uh, all the settings are at the minimum at the moment. So you've just come into this um, and you see something that's not too impressive. Okay, uh, you need to open up your main menu. Press F10 if you can't see it already. And it should appear at the top of the screen. This gives you your various options. Now I'm presuming you have ticked the ALS rendering engine box in the launcher before you come into the sim. Uh, if not, go back and do it now. But also to check, make sure it is actually active. Select the view menu. Then the rendering options. And you get this little box here. Now, over here it says atmospheric light scattering. You need to tick that if it's not ticked already. Look at the difference already. See the difference that makes? Look. Right. Okay. So that's the basic ALS properly active. You can change a lot of settings in here. Uh, can you can run flick gear on a pretty basic machine, uh, and you can still ramp it up high enough to cripple top end machine if you need to, which you obviously you don't want to do that if you don't have to. Right, in the first part of the screen you've got various options, power lines, detailed roads, railways, buildings, random scenery objects, vegetation, vegetation shadows which is available during ALS only, scenery objects and terrain textures. Terrain textures are by default regional specific. Um, if I just swap this over to the global, you'll see what happens here one second. Reload the screen. Don't know sound down. Here we go. Anyway, it changes the textures of the ground to something more generic. But regional specific is usually the best option for various parts of the planet. Yeah, we'll just turn the regional specific back on. Okay, that's it back. Now, still looks a bit bare. Mind you, this area of the planet I'm on is quite flat, so there's not a lot of hills here, so on the southeast coast of England. Right, let's get the menu open again. There we are. Right, now you have your options. Let's go through them. Powers and power lines. If you want power lines on, Fine, turn them on. You can follow the power lines when you're flying, if you fly low level. Of course, you can't see them from where I am at the moment, but they're way over there. Detailed roads and rail yeah, railways, I always keep it unenabled. It adds more road data and places which actually have bigger roads, but this is a fairly flat and uneventful part of the country. Um, next. Buildings. You've got different options. You can run random or you can have open street map data. Now the open street map data is something that's progressively filtering into the different map tiles in flag gear. The success you get with it will depend where you are and how up to date the tiles are. They are filtering them through to a lot more tiles and uh, it will become more and more popular as time goes on. You can also turn on the random scenery objects which adds extra buildings and objects, pylons, various things to the scenery as well. Vegetation. 
lots of options. You can have it bare, no trees, and you can basically go all the way up to very thick, very dense, realistic areas of high forestation. Um, there's a lot optimization in 2017 3.1 which reduces the frame rate loss when you use high density stuff in the vegetation so you can pick what one you like for you uh, it's up to you also your vegetation shadows this only works with ALS we turn that on any trees and whatnot will cast shadows depending on sunlight additional scenery objects Yep, turn them on if you can if your machine can handle them. Let's just do a wee refresh. Here we go, we got trees. Look at that, there we go. Some extra buildings over there. Oh the street map, there's extra buildings there. So the land's starting to look a bit more popular. Populated that way. Right, so that's the basic options. Um, for smoke effects, rain, and 3D clouds, I would keep them turned on. Some machines have problems with particle effects, which is the uh, dust effects and vapor trails and such like that. It's an option you can turn them on and off. Uh, cloud density. You know, you can change your cloud density all the way up to heavy and the view distance uh, I like to sort of keep it long view distances but that's me now your additional options are here in the shader options you take the custom settings box it gives you this so you click into that and you get various sliders which do lots of things to different places it affects how the transitions between the different land class tiles affect each other and there's a lot of things um, so you can see I can just see my screen slowly changing there it's not the best I have terrains to do it on but see the tiles are changing is there, is there a town nearby? No, there's no town nearby. The other one we can't see any change at the minute because we're not near enough a town. Agriculture. Water shaders. We'll see the differences here. We can see the sea. Right, let's go back to that. Here's the model effects, which actually affects your aircraft. So, I'm looking at the model here. There we go. Wind effects, um, that affects the, when we're down low level, that affects how the wind and the weather system affects the trees and the grass, and they all blow in the wind and such like. in the forest station pretty much uh, there you go you can see the differences that makes makes them either easier to navigate or realistic height so that's the basics now what also affects the way things look is actually the weather settings the settings in the weather that uh, will affect the land and the way these clouds and everything look. So we'll go back to the view, the environment menu, sorry, then click on weather. Now the default is basic weather, but what we want to use is detailed weather and live data. You've got a box here for advanced settings. Set it up for METAR, set up your terrain effects and terrain pre-sampling. This does affect the way the weather interacts with the ground. You can also set up uh, the different wind model.
for gusts and how the speed of the gusts, direction of the gusts, frequency of the gusts. You also want to tick your thermals, cloud shadows and realistic visibility. That gives you a realistic visibility distance based upon the weather system and the air mass. Uh, so if you're in a high pressure zone the mass is different from a low pressure zone and your view distance changes. Also. You've also got uh, conditions here for convection, turbulence, ground haze. Now the ground haze does make a difference. It um, depends I suppose on the area you're in, if you're in a dusty area as well. Air pollution, you want clean air, you want smoggy air. Let's just turn it all up and see what happens. Fog probabilities. Smooth gives you like a blanket float, a fog effect when there is fog. If you move it to somewhere in the middle or near the structure, what you end up getting is uh, patchy fog and mist in the hollows, depending on the weather, which looks much, much better. And your maximum visibility range, again, that's up to your system. Uh, air mass, again up to yourself and cloud patterns. So let's go with what was just set and see what happens. I have to unpause it to get this. Give me a second. That's the difference the weather settings makes. Ground haze, clouds are different. Uh, yep, it makes a lot of difference to the way things look. And there's the cloud shadows, you can see them in the water over here. You see there's light and dark areas between the cloud and no cloud and patchy sunshine. So the thing with the weather is, you always, when you come into it, even though you've ticked all the boxes before and you, you think it's saved, it doesn't seem to save it as such. It'll save all the settings, but it won't turn them on until you go back to environment, weather. And basically it'll be all like that and just hit OK and then it'll turn all it back on again. Also in your environment settings, you can set your snow lines, um, ice, dust, how wet the ground is, how dry it is, vegetation, like this. Yes. See, let's make it wet. Oh, it's not raining though, so. You can change it depending on, you know, time of year. If you're up north, Aurora. There's no ice cover because it's summer, obviously. But. So that basically covers all that. Let's put that back to there. It's dry, so I like it with that. Okay. So that basically covers the different ALS options that are available. Um, if you're using Rembrandt, some of these options are not available, uh, but you do have some different options because you have uh, a way of trimming the real-time shadows and such like, but that's for another time. So that's basically how to tune your ALS settings in Flight Gear 2017 3.1.